Hello everyone, thank you for watching. It's World Fertility Day. I thought I'd hop on here and share a little bit about my story and some of the most important lessons I learned when I was undergoing my infertility journey. If you're new, thank you so much for watching. I underwent 12 IVF cycles. If you are interested in my story and what led to my Baba, I will put a link of the playlist of that journey. Um, I do have to warn you that it's very IVF rough, but this is one of the reasons why I wanted to share my story because for a lot of my viewers, uh, they have just left the doctor's office and they have been told that IVF is not an option for them. You are not alone. This is a journey of hope and faith. And so I hope that my channel and others will give you inspiration. So very quickly, if you are not new to my channel, I will just go ahead and share my diagnosis because I know that I have a bunch of new subscribers. Um, so my diagnosis is a diminished ovarian reserve. I have age-related infertility. I'm currently 46 years old. I had my son at 46. And um, I was diagnosed as perimenopausal. My MH at the time that I was preparing to have my son was a 0.1 and my FSH was a 24, so you can imagine. IVF was probably not an option for me. Now that I understand the science, um, I can kind of see why the doctors were like telling me to go to donor reg. But thanks to the community here on YouTube, I was able to have Baba, my own biological child with my own eggs. And like I said, in the playlist below, you'll be able to follow through that journey. Now, today, I'm going to quickly share with you, because I know uh, to pay homage to this day, some of the important things I learned throughout my journey, a highlight. So if you are interested, um, stay tuned. The first thing that I learned in my journey that I think it's important for you to know is that for me, IUI was actually a waste of time. Looking back, um, I did five IUIs, and... You know, it's it's interesting to say this because after undergoing the journey and understanding what my diagnosis was, I now realize that I was actually wasting my time. It's interesting because I did actually connect with an, uh, a doctor on YouTube. His name is Dr. Saul Silber. And he kept saying on his channel, uh, he's uh, the doctor of the Fertility Center in St. Louis, and he is a mini IVF doctor, which is the type of IVF that I uh, pursued. But... I kept on saying about how IUI is a waste of time and you may as well just try on your own at home. And so um, if I, I know that if you're seeing this for the first time and you're going through IUI, you might be thinking, well, I'm not quite sure, but I promise you, particularly if you're older, you probably would rather go straight into IVF. Now, if you want to try, because I'm a huge fan of trying, don't do five IUIs like I did. Maybe do one or two, at the most three IUIs, and then proceed on to IVF. The reason IUI ended up being a waste for me is because it really was not going to work. At my age, over 40, I needed a more intrusive approach to ensure that I would be able to uh, take my take-home baby. And I realize that now. So hopefully that tip is useful for you. The second tip I have for you is that age-related infertility is actually the biggest challenge, regardless of the diagnosis. So you know how like I shared my diagnosis? So I obviously had age-related infertility due to my age, but I had diminished ovarian reserve. I was perimenopausal. And um, it's, it's interesting because when you're looking at your diagnosis, I'll give you a good example. Some of you might have diminished reserve, but you're younger. In fact, one of the ladies that inspired me, I saw her off Instagram. She had diminished reserve, but she was a lot younger than I was. And so she also worked with my doctor, by the way, uh, Dr. Frank Yillian of the Life IVF Center. And she was successful in having her baby girl because doctors were saying that she had diminished reserve. She should go to donor reg. But then obviously the miracle doctor, Dr. Frank Yillian, was able to work with her and she had her take home baby. The reason I share that is because you are actually conceived at the, at the moment of conception. That's, that's all the eggs you're ever going to have from conception 
those are the eggs that's it and they continue to age you're born with the eggs you're gonna have the rest of your life and you kind of know that at least for me but you don't actually sit in that thought <laughs> until you're kind of doing your research and understanding IVF and fertility and so um, it is very very important to know that so I share that to impress upon you that if you are dealing with age-related infertility regardless of whatever the diagnosis is really what you're then doing is you're hunting for the right egg you're looking for the golden egg and so you cannot compare yourself with other people who are going through IVF who are much younger you cannot control the number and the cycles that it will take to get to that golden egg but you can try and so the, if you look at my journey that's exactly what we did now think thankfully for me my doctor dr. Frank Helian he does specialize in women who are older so he had data in his clinic that helped inform me with my planning obviously it wasn't a guarantee but um, he has data to confirm the likelihood of getting to that golden egg and uh, that happened for me in my sixth IVF cycle out of the 12, which is why I got the motivation to continue my journey, as you can see, because once you get that golden egg, um, there's something that just happens where you're like, okay, let me see if I can. And obviously finances as well. But um, I did want to share that too, as we celebrate World Fertility Day. The other tip I wanted to share is do not be afraid to freeze your eggs. Um, now what does give me comfort is that at the time that the freezing of the eggs was happening in my late 30s there wasn't the technology that we have today the vitrification is a technology they have today which increases the likelihood of your eggs surviving now I say this because there are some things you cannot control in your life particularly if you're getting of age or you're older you cannot control when you're gonna meet your husband you cannot control how your life is going to turn out. And so if you freeze your eggs, what happens is because a woman can actually birth the child until the age of 50, then sometimes a little bit older than that, then what happens is you will have these eggs once you meet your future partner in life. So for those who are not maybe comfortable using a sperm donor, who would like to give themselves time, than freezing your eggs, especially now with vitrification. I think it's really, really a good idea. I recommend freezing your eggs multiple times, maybe once or twice, because when they thaw, the likelihood of survival might actually be low. Um, but the vitrification method has really helped. Now, if I had frozen my eggs in my time, um, they probably would not have survived, but I wish I did that because who knows? I mean, who knows what would have happened, right? This is a journey of hope and faith. And so if you're watching this and you are getting of age and you are not with somebody in your life and you do not want to use a sperm donor, for example, if you're a woman, then, um, you would then really need to consider doing that because it does help you freeze your youth. And so what would happen is you would donate to yourself and all of us are doing it. I mean, I froze a uh, Baba and, uh, you know, then was able to transfer him a year later. Um, I have frozen embryos that we're in the process of testing that I can possibly transfer in future. Right? So you got to think about, Think about that, particularly if you would like your own biological children. Now, there's some people who don't mind, you know, egg donation, and that's perfectly fine. But if you are somebody who is probably thinking that you would um, would like to try with your own biological eggs, then I would recommend freezing your eggs. The last suggestion I will share from my experience for World Fertility Day is that there are different types of IVF. So you're probably watching this if you're new because you left the doctor's office and they said IVF is not an option and you just Googled or egg donation is the way to go and you you know you Googled or went to YouTube and you found my channel. And so I will share this with you. I did not know at the time that the real language was supposed to be that the type of IVF that is commonly offered, which is conventional IVF, was not going to be the fit for me. Really, that's what my doctor should have told me. Um, but after doing research, obviously, is how I discovered that there are different ways to do this intrusive method, 
once you are have age-related infertility. So the, the types of IVF are conventional IVF, so that's the standard IVF. There's a lot of medication. It's a real blessing because you can actually um, have your own family from just one cycle or two cycles. And those with um, a lot of eggs, if you do an antifollicle count and you have a lot of eggs, um, I would say over six eggs, then uh, conventional IVF is, is absolutely the way to go. And then there is another IVF called mini IVF, which is what I pursued. Mini IVF is gentler on the body because if you have few eggs, you don't need all those drugs to make them mature. It ends up actually affecting the eggs, which is what happened to me. And so um, mini IVF just means reduced uh, medications to kind of tease the few eggs you have. And in some cases, I only had one that I needed teasing. And so um, that is the type of IVF I used. Um, and then there is ultra mini IVF, which is even more reduced medication, but just a little bit of medication to tease the eggs that you have. And then there is natural cycle IVF, which I also was able to um, pursue in some of my cycles. And most recently for my 13th IVF cycle that I am going to be sharing on my channel, so stay tuned, we did a natural cycle. Because again, when you just have few eggs, you don't need all those medications. Pregnancy is a natural process. And so, and you know this, you know, if you're wholesome, if, if you don't need a lot of medications. And so natural cycle IVF is also a great way to go. So be informed. I, and I remember I wish at the time that I was informed, I wouldn't have been so devastated. But um, again, you're watching my channel for a reason. And so hopefully those are some options that you could discuss with your doctor. Hopefully, folks, those tips were helpful. Remember, I will put links to my extensive journey below. Um, if you're new, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe. Um, I do have more content coming. We are in the process of planning for baby number two. And so I underwent a PRP cycle and I also underwent my 13th IVF cycle. And um, I will, the process of getting those videos together for you so that you can be able to see the journal and what that journey was like in the hopes that it will inspire, motivate you. And maybe you could learn a tip or two uh, about some of the things that we learned. Thank you so much for watching. Until my next video, bye.